think he possibly is. I mean, I don't really know. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the trailer invitation, but I don't really know um, if he is or not. I mean, I just think that he looked good. He fought a very tough guy. And if I think if Lamont Peterson was given the opportunity to do more, he would have done more. So I think Earl was able to be, you know, defensive mind. He gave a couple of shots, but that's boxing. That's what, you know, that's what happens in boxing. And um, he was able to keep coming and keep the pressure and, and keep doing what he needed to do to be successful. Oh, no. Hey, man, I don't really know. I mean, we strong with heavyweight. So, I mean, maybe the heavyweight in the gym, you know, um, can do the work, you know, but it's not a fight. But, you know, I don't know. There. There was nothing Lamont did that I was surprised you guys at all? No, I mean, you know, he, he, he kind of did exactly what we expected. Every now and then I was going to shoot a sneaky right hand, and he did that also. And so um, that's why I came to the corner and said, listen, every now and then he's trying to catch you with a counter punch, you know, or a right counter or a left counter. And I watched him when he fought, um, it was the last fight, whoever the guy was. And uh, that's what he was kind of doing, sneaking a little straight right. And the right or the left hook, so it was okay. I mean, we were prepared for that. Uh, what round did you say this is the beginning of the year? Well, I, you know, when, when he knocked him down, I do that. Because initially, when you see the uh, when he opens him up, he dropped him, that was kind of that. That was kind of the point where it went like overkill. I mean, why you let him keep punching a guy like that? I mean, what's the, what's the point of that? I mean, I don't understand yeah. it myself. Hey. Yeah. I can't tell you because we're going to work on it, you know what I mean, whatever it is, you know, but hey, you just got to keep the focus like you've been doing, keep doing what you've been doing, right? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the welterweight champion of the world and one of the best fighters on the planet. EJ! Um, I'm not going to say I'm the pound for pound best fighter in the world right now, but I'm definitely headed that way. Dante, Dante's Boxing Nation, Errol, congratulations. Did you mess up by looking too impressive to where some of your other um, competition may say, you know what, let me wait until he um, looks a little bit more flawed before I get in with him? Oh, um, no. I mean, you can't never look too impressive. Well, you know, every fight I want to look impressive, every fight I want to put on one side of performances, and that's, you know, that's what I always say. So you can't never look too too impressive in a fight. Uh, Errol, 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 right here. Right here. Oh. Coach Anthony, Coach Anthony here with Behind the Gloves, man. Uh, congratulations on a great win. Uh, tonight you showed that you could box. You showed that you could use angles and you can use lateral movement. And you can actually box from the outside. We saw Peterson try to walk you down, which I don't think was the smartest decision. Obviously, showed that. So, uh, do you think that also show people who think that you're just a come forward fighter, who think that you just put pressure that you can actually box, utilize movement angles and whatnot? Um, yeah, I mean, guys who grew up with me in the amateurs now I can box. You know, I started out boxing. You know, I didn't win national tournaments and win tournaments overseas, and you know, become Olympian because. I was just a come forward fighter. You know, I can do it both. I can box and I can come forward. But, you know, I never really showed that game because, you know, I always knew I could just press guys out and just beat them up. So, you know, my coach told me to, to show different things and vary my, my style up and my punches up and just step over. So um, I listened to him this fight and just stepping over, using my angles and things like that. Over here, Harold. Over here, Harold. Congratulations to you. Uh, can you, I have two questions for you. The first one, can you just discuss your, uh, you, you relied a lot on, on tremendous body punching tonight. That seemed to really, really wear him down. Um, can you, is that part of Derek's plan all along, go at the body? Um, that's every fight. That's every fight. You know, that's just repetition. That's what we practice in the gym. That's what we've been doing since the amateurs. You know, we've been going to the body. You know, body first and then go upstairs. You know, because the body is a bigger target than the head. So, we like going to the body first, breaking the, Breaking the guy down, then bringing it back upstairs. The other question is, you, you made your point in the ring afterwards. You said, as you said before the fight, that the fighter you want is Keith Thurman. 
but uh, we all know that that won't be next because he's coming off the injury. He's going to fight somebody else in April. He said himself, sitting right in that spot where you guys did a press conference a couple months ago, that he didn't think the fight would happen even perhaps until 2019. You're not going to sit around and wait for him, as you've said. Who out there can you fight that's not Keith Thurman that, that can interest the fans or interest you um, in, your, in your next fight? I mean, anybody. I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit around and wait for him like I've been saying. Um, the whole goal is this year is to stay active and fight quality opponents. So um, right now I'm just thinking of a homecoming. I'm thinking about going home and fighting in Dallas, my next fight. So hopefully we can make that happen. I want to answer that also. Is that we, we are giving Keith Thurman an allowance that we did not give a Kell Brook because the world expected Kell Brook to fight L. Smith next, right? Okay. Yeah, but he's giving him a pass now. He, he had a, he's come, well, you know, everybody giving him a pass because he came out of a surgery. Both both same situation, so he shouldn't be allowed to wait for two years or whatever it is he wants to do. He should be able to take, get in there and take a fight. Oh, over here. Congratulations on an impressive performance. This was your first fight since May. That was your first fight since August before. Do you want to be more active, and how many times do you want to fight this year? Um, this year I want to fight three times. Um, <clears throat> I didn't take too much punishment. You know, got hit a couple of times, so you now I'm looking to come back in either May or June and hopefully have a homecoming in Dallas. But at least three times a year, I, I would like to fight. Are you at Right here, Lou, you had mentioned that um, you thought that uh, Danny Garcia lost or had a draw with Lamont Peterson. What kind of statement is this with him fighting next month and, you know, for fans to make that direct comparison, what you did against Lamont, what he did against Lamont? It's a big statement. You know, like I, like I always say, you know, when I fight guys and, you know, they fought, you know, another lead fighter, you know, I always want to showcase and do better than them, you know, show with the Chris Nigeri fight. He fought Pacquiao, he showed with the um, Bundu fight, and he fought Keith Thurman with tour rounds. You know, it's been showing, you know, Kell Brook and the other fighters. So, you know, I wanted to show that, you know, I, it wasn't an easy fight. You know, it was a lot of thought going into the fight, and a lot, of, especially in the inside and in the ring, because Lamont a crafty fight. And if you back up from him, if he sense any type of weakness, Lamont's going to come forward. So, I mean, my coach came up with a great game plan, and, um, you know, Made it look kind of easy. So you go into the ring with a conscious decision of making that direct comparison and finishing stronger than somebody else. I'm not going in the ring, but you know, doing training, you know, we make a conscious. Just, you know, I, I I think about that. I I watched the Danny Garcia Lamar fight. I seen it was a close fight. It could have went either way. So you know, I wanted to make it look easier than that fight, and I wanted to put on a better performance than Danny did. John Kelly, New York fights. Errol. Do you piggyback off of your trainer's statements with regard to Keith Thurman not getting a pass to fight you? Uh, we're in January of 2018. Obviously, we got a long way to go. Do you see any reason why that fight shouldn't be made this year? When I interviewed him earlier uh, this month, he indicated that uh, a lot of things regarding yourself was a little overblown and that he's a bigger puncher than Kel Brook because he hurt Sean Porter a couple times in that fight and Brook wasn't able to hurt him. What do you think about the likelihood of that fight if Keith Thurman is able to come back and let's say April looks pretty good? What would you like to say to Keith Thurman right now? Um, I mean, he said he's a bigger person than these guys, but when the last time he got a knockout? I mean, so, the, you know, that, you know, his, the, the, the pedigree opponent is raised and he's not getting the knockouts anymore. You know, he was one time when he was fighting lower caliber fighters, but now he's, he's not getting any knockouts. And, um, you know, I give him a pass. You know, I even said that I've been going to work and say that I let him have a tuna fight. He's been out for a while. He just come off an injury and have a tuna fight. But after that, it should be me. In 2018. Yeah, 2018. This is the beginning of the year. This is January. We have a tuna fight March, April. Then we can fight at the end of the year. Coach Anthony here with uh, Behind the Gloves again. I have another question for you. Um, so you beat Kel Brook, you beat Lamont Peterson. Do you feel that you beat, like out of all the guys in the 147 division, do you feel that like you already beat the two best fighters? And if not, who do you think would be your toughest challenge at 147, other than obviously a Keith Thurman as a, as a name, but who else is out there? Who else would you like to fight? Um, you know, with Lamont, he is a top five fighter in the 120 division. With Kel Brook, you know, before I beat him, he was 
everybody was saying that you know arguably he was the best what's way in the division. You know, he was a big guy, he was real sharp, he's got the box and bang. Um you know, it's a lot of guys for me to fight. I mean Hey Earl, correct. I'm TBA Boxing Talk, Dallas, Texas. Hey, what up, man? Before this fight, a lot of people were saying, oh, Earl can't move his head, he can't box. They said he was just a come forward fighter. Did you show everybody tonight's a full awesome? I've been told people I can do it all. Like I, like I said before, nobody really made me box, or nobody really made me, you know, move my head or use angles and things like that. You know, even with my coach, my coach, why don't you, you know, I do it in sparring all the time. My coach in the fight, he's like, why, why don't you use your angles? Why aren't you moving doing this? Because I didn't have to. You know, and just today, I just felt like boxing, <laughs> using my angles and things like that. But you see, at the end of the round, I start coming forward. Errol, Chris Connor, your last call radio show. Congratulations on performance first. Uh, we're in an era now where talking trash, Twitter feuds, Instagram posts, that's how you become a big star, whether it's Connor, whether it's Floyd, whether it's Adrian. That's not you. You're not a guy who likes to talk trash. How do you build your brand? How do you become a guy who can, you know, captivate people who are non-boxing fans, casual fans, when you don't want to go on Twitter, you don't want to go on Facebook, and then I'm guessing you don't want to be one of those guys who acts like an idiot. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard didn't talk trash either. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard crossed over and became that guy because his performance in the ring, you know, the, you know, his smile, he was a people's person and things like that. So, it's funny, before you went to hear his name came up. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> and things like that. All so. he's got to do is keep beating people's asses like he's yeah. been doing every fight out there. You don't have to play the fool. Just, just do what you're supposed to do. And, and if you're exciting enough in the ring and you're destroying top level of competition, you're going to be a star. Five million people saw him fight on network television. 12,000 people. He's, he don't live here in Brooklyn. It would be nice if he did, but he, 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 he lives in Texas. He came in and did with 12,000 people here tonight. I mean, the, it's happening. I'm sorry. Harold, <laughs> <laughs> you're obviously a special fighter, but Derek James is a special trainer. Do you think he's trainer to you? Definitely. I mean, definitely. Especially if you look what he's done with Jamel. I mean, Jamel was a guy who who used to box. He didn't get many knockouts. Um, you know, people was trying to call him boring and things like that. And then now, you know, he's getting knocked out. He had, I think, two knock two knockouts that was that was nominated for knockout of the year. So I mean, you see it. The proof is in the pudding. Even with me, every fight I'm developing, I'm getting better. Um, I'm getting more calmer in the ring, um, skills and everything else. So, I mean, the proof is in the pudding that he should be coach of the year. He has two fighters on top of the game in both, in 147 and 154. Yeah, I was a little disappointed, but, you know, with us, we keep our head down and keep working. We're not worried about it. You know, as long as we keep winning, keep looking great, that's all we're worried about. Hey, congrats on the, uh, the win, champ. All right, I'm from a round by round boxing. A thing that obviously changed since uh, you and Lamont sparring back in the day. But uh, anything tonight that caught you off guard with his uh, with him staying in the pocket so much? Um, did you have any you know expectations of him fighting a different fight? Uh no, I I think you know Lamont the whole game plan was you know not to not to get on their back foot because they didn't want me to you know become confident and uh, try to press them out. So they tried to stand their ground and, you know, it kind of backfired on them because they didn't expect me to box. You know, they wanted me to just come forward and shoot my load and, you know, go all out. And I was using my jab, boxing, using my angles and my reach and my distance. Um, hey, last, last question. Hey, uh, Dante's Boxing Nation. Uh, going back to Keith Thurman, like you said, you give him a pass and it's understandable he could get a tune-up. Do you think it's possible maybe you guys can have a double header where you guys fight on the same card and you can oh. sign a contract before that? It won't happen? If he co man, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I'm agreeing to something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really see either one of them. But regardless, regardless. Okay, all right. All right. All right. right back there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Uh, John Cudney, Red Fox West Sunday Puncher. So uh, congratulations, Eric and uh, uh, Errol and Derek. Uh, so uh, you showed devastating power again tonight. Your sparring partners say you hit like a heavyweight. Derek talks about all the bones you've broken in your sparring partners and uh, your opponents. Is there anyone at 147 go to the distance with you, speaking of guys like Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter? I mean, they could. That's what we're trying for. Like I said before, this is my Peterson fight. We train for the distance. I don't train, you know, for a six round fight, seven round fight. I train mentally for a twelve round fight. So if I if it's in the tenth, eleven round, you know, I still have gas in the tank. You know, I don't train for early knockouts. If it's come, it come, I'll take it. But other than that, we don't focus on knockouts during training. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.